Hey there, VR gang. It's Brandon, your friendly internet postmaster. And surprise, surprise, Luke decided to put in the extra work of getting the real mod working with Vulkan just for this game. So let's jump in, get this installed on our system, and start living out our childhood dream of being Indiana Jones in VR. You will of course need the latest version of the mod, which should be 16.2 at the time of this recording. As always, you should be able to find the latest mod version attached to this pinned post on Luke Ross's Patreon if you're watching this from the future. Unfortunately, the game settings files for Indy are encrypted to each user, so the real config file won't be able to automatically change settings when it runs. That means we'll have to go in and make these changes manually before we install the mod. Remember, it's always important to run the game flat at least once anyways, so the game has a chance to generate these settings files. So here are the necessary changes we need to make for VR to run properly. You should be able to find these in the game's release post as well. I have the game running flat, so we can also see exactly where each setting is located. So first we need to head to controller options, scroll down to aim assist, and set that to off so it doesn't conflict with the head based aiming. Then tab over to the video settings, and in the screen setup section we need to make sure the game is running in windowed mode, aspect ratio is set to 16.9, and the window size is set to 1920 by 1080. If you've changed any of these, make sure to hit apply video mode changes or they won't take effect. Under graphic settings, make sure picture framing is set to full screen, field of view is set to 110, v-sync needs to be turned off, FPS limit set to a thousand, we're essentially disabling any kind of FPS cap outside of the mod in your headset. If you have an HDR monitor, you'll need to disable HDR for the game here. Set motion blur to off, chromatic aberration to off, and then depth of field and depth of field anti-aliasing both need to be off. So a major word of warning about texture pool size. You need to be very careful how high you set this, depending on how much VRAM your GPU has. If you're running something like a 3090 or 4090, you're probably fine setting this to higher levels. But otherwise, you may want to start out on one of the lower settings, until you get your other settings and resolution dialed in, and then if you have extra VRAM overhead, come back and set this higher. If you go the opposite route, and start hitting your VRAM too hard, while you try and tweak settings and resolution, you might end up with a VRAM thrashing, which will tank your FPS so low that it will be hard to even get into the menu, or make changes, or quit the game. Path tracing is definitely not recommended. This game already takes a lot of GPU power to run in VR, and the visual gains of path tracing just aren't worth the extra high cost of performance here. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, and you're going to take advantage of DLSSS, which you absolutely should for this game, You'll need to scroll further down and make sure you have DLSS enabled, as well as whatever quality level you need based on your hardware and performance. Do make sure to keep frame generation off, as it doesn't work with this mod or VR in general. And now that our settings are all set to initiate VR liftoff, we can close out of the game and actually install the mod. Let's first unblock the real folder to help avoid any security issues when running the config file later. Right click on the zipped real folder, click on properties, and then at the bottom you'll see a box that says unblock. Check it, and then hit apply. The install path for this one should be easy, as the game's main exe file is located right in the main game folder. So all you have to do is locate the main game folder for whatever platform you have the game on. I have it on Steam, so the main game folder for me will be in C, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and The Great Circle. All we have to do is open up our real folder we downloaded earlier, drag all the files into the main indie folder, and then run the config file, and the mod should install. After hitting any button to close the window, all you should have to do at this point is make sure your headset is connected and actively running on your PC, and then launch the game from your game library, or even the exe file in the main game folder here. If for some reason the config file gives you an error, or if you have any other issues with installation or bugs, game bugs that is, please keep your insects to yourself, please visit Luke Ross's Patreon page and post all about your current VR woes. 
please do give us as much detail as possible, including what headset you're using and system specs. Adding in a paste bin link to a real VR log file is always a plus. And now we move on to the entirely optional part of the video, where I try to offer some sort of additional tweaks or extra performance related advice for fellow game tweaking addicts like myself. Unfortunately, I didn't get to spend much time tweaking indie, but not to fear, others have already done the legwork of building up presets for added stability and a bit more performance. But first, as always, I recommend starting with an optimized settings video. You'll find the one by benchmarking linked in the description below. You'll also find a link to some presets if you want to try them out. There are two options for presets, and I went with the Optimization Essentials set because it seems to have a broader range of options, and they're all neatly contained in one folder. Either preset option seems to mostly change the same settings and CVARs, but again, I didn't do a ton of tweaking and digging myself. I do recommend looking at the description page for the other presets, as it has more info and details on the settings they change, as well as a 10 minute video of the creator going over those. There's no audio in the video, it's just text, but still worth a look if you want to dive deeper into changing the CVARs. Since all that info is already available, I'm just going to offer an easy workflow to go about trying out these presets. Because every time you drop them in, you'll have to go back into the game flat to change the screen setup settings to get the game running in VR again. First, I recommend having the main game folder open and higher up in the middle of your screen like this. Then, we'll need to head to the location of the config files that we're going to replace by dropping in the presets. You can find that in your users folder. For me, that's C, users, your username, which is brand for me, saved games, machine games, the great circle, and then base. We'll put that in the lower left side of the screen. Then we'll open up the folder with all the presets and drag that over to the lower right hand side of the screen. If you wanted to try the other presets, you could also add them to this folder to keep everything in one place. From this setup, go ahead and open up your presets folder drag over the config file or files, drop them in the base folder, and then replace. Since this is going to change any number of game settings, including the video settings, we'll need to run the game flat again. You can do this by renaming the realvr64.dll file to realvr64 underscore back dot dll. But if you're going to be spending time trying out multiple presets, or going back and forth, it's much quicker and easier to just copy that file over to the game's base folder so you have a VR-ready copy to drag back in, and then just delete the file from the main game folder to enable you to go back into the game flat and change settings. So a few words of general advice while we're in the game flat here changing our VR baseline settings back. Global illumination is an important setting for shimmering and artifacts around objects, at least in this game. I'd recommend keeping it at at least medium or it'll be very noticeable. High is best, but also costs a decent amount of performance. The upper quality presets will use ray tracing and potentially path tracing, so keep that in mind. Some of them will also turn things like depth of field back on, and also change DLSS quality levels. So look over the settings carefully while you're in the game flat before adding VR back. Also, I don't recommend leaving the DLL file in the base folder after you're done experimenting just in case the mod gets an update and you forget to replace it with the updated version. I wouldn't recommend doing something like this with the files in general, outside of a special use case like this. For the same reason, things change and we can easily forget and drag some old file in and possibly create issues. This is just a time-saving method if you're going to experiment with these. Now that we're confident we have our important VR settings back where they need to be, we can simply drag our DLL file back in, launch the game from the EXE, and try the preset in VR. You can simply rinse and repeat these steps to try out different presets. I wish I had more advice to offer, but I didn't get a lot of time to just focus on this game unfortunately. If you happen to find something that works really well, please feel free to share in the comments and the Patreon. Above all else, just enjoy your time being Indiana Freakin' Jones in VR. Until next time, praise the fun!